Welcome back, everyone, to the conclusion, the epic, epic conclusion to Xamarin Dev Days Live. Hundreds of people have been streaming us live on the interwebs. I know my mom is on logged on like six times. Oh, so, you know I mean, my mom seriously, is too. Seriously, really excited she's, about that. She's been blowing up my Twitter feed. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> she's all like, Seth and James, you're so cute. Um, that's how my mom, my mom is. Yeah, that's um, my mom's is the same, bro. So essentially, we're doing something special. First yeah. time ever. First time. We, we are doing a hands-on li lab live. Mm -hmm. And you are my I have experiment. Not, I have not written production code in many years. <laughs> I write a lot of demo where, ladies and gentlemen, just FYI. But the thing is, the goal is you're supposed to follow along. I have not I done this before. Yep. I don't know what's going on. There's no idea. I don't know. And so I'm going to go through. I tried watching the stuff from before. But people kept like asking me stuff about other stuff. So I'm literally going this blind and I might run into issues and yeah. that's what we're here for. That's why we have 90 minutes. And we're taking questions live. So I have a, on my beautiful rose gold Mac, I have a big screen that has all of your questions. So as you're asking questions, I'll be reading them and we can interject. And Seth is kind of, this is one of his you know, newer Xamarin Forms apps that's that, right. that he's been trying to get up and running. And we're going to build something live. So the first thing we want to do is zoom in on where people can grab this code, this beautiful pixelated URL that I, I put up first, which is github.com slash Xamarin slash Dev Days Labs. Now this URL is going to give you all the slides that we presented today, um, all the demos that we presented today, and the hands-on lab, uh, which is really important because you're going to be able to walk along at home, download this GitHub repo. Everything that you need is in this puppy right here, all right? Or this GitHub kitty, I should say, the Octocat. Everything is here. That's really important. That's so people right. had asked about slides. They're already available. We're also going to put them on the recordings of everything we're doing here. Uh, so go to github.com slash Xamarin slash Dev Days Labs. And before you ask, because everyone's going to ask, is this going to be recorded and saved? Yes, it will. Our bad humor will live on forever. Ever. My dad jokes will be plastered on Channel 9 <laughs> until the end of time. Perfect. Yes. That's, what, that's what I wanted. That's right. So here's what's cool, is I want you to kind of walk through this GitHub repo really quick, uh, Seth. So let's zoom yes, out on this machine. Okay. So let's pump up these fonts a little bit. There Boom. So what's important is you have demos, slide decks. I try to name them as you will. Now check out Hands-On Lab. Okay. So Hands-On Lab is going to have a finish folder, which is kind of what we're aiming to get to, okay. uh, which has the solution. But we also have a start folder. Okay. Right? The start folder is where we're going to start. Um, and we're going to try to get this code. Okay. So it's going to have all the projects and kind of, I did like a boilerplate. Doing file new takes a little bit of time, but I did file new, added the nougats we needed. Okay. Now, scroll down a little bit. Yes, sir. Now, we are going to follow along. I'm going to kind of read back this directions. Okay. And people can follow along in this readme at home. We are literally going to go through this readme and I'm going to describe to Seth what we're doing and he's going to follow along, write some code. You're going to write some code. We're going to build an app. We're creating an app called Dev Day Speakers, which is going to go out to the interwebs download speaker data um, and display it in a list and we're going to do some navigation to some details. Okay. So you can, and there's also code snip in here. You can copy and paste right from GitHub into Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio. And again, it doesn't matter if you're on Mac or PC, um, you're good to go. You're on a PC, so we're going to focus on Android and uh, Windows development. Should I just download the zip? So this is what you want to do. Download the zip and put it in a short Place like maybe your desktop when you extract it, extract it to the desktop. Okay. Sure. Just because you know Windows has that 300 and crazy Properties, character thing. Unblock. Yep. Unblock it. Unblock it. Uh, I may have downloaded. Oh, I did download it before just to make sure. Yep. But let me delete that. So, oh, it's not letting me delete it. That's okay. I'll do something on my desktop, and I, I'll call it something that I can remember later on. Right. Something really that's good name name Perfect. for it. And then Perfect I'll take name. this and I'll move this over here. Yes. Now here's, okay. now here's, so this is going to extract, and here's my recommendation. See what Seth is doing here. This is going to extract the entire Dev Days uh, lab folder. Now go into that folder. Okay. Now grab that, that um, go into hands-on lab. Okay. Drag and drop the start folder to your desktop. Boom. That way it's a nice and short URL. We know where we're at right here. We're in the, we're in the start. Okay. And now let's go ahead and open it up. So I have it open. There's nothing here. Nothing up my short little nothing sleeve. Mm -hmm. So let me go to open project. By the way, I did wear my James Montemagno inspired shirt. I today. appreciate that. Just want to let you know. I appreciate that. I tried buttoning. Good. The, I tried buttoning the top button, top but shelf. it just <laughs> just wouldn't do it. All right. So go even to, even Henry here wore his little scarf. Is that the name of the of the monkey, Henry? This is Henry. Okay. Yeah, he's a world traveler. Okay. Let me get Dev Day speakers. 
So you're uh, gonna, yeah, open up the solution. And again, I've installed the NuGets, but we haven't downloaded the NuGets. We haven't done anything yet at this point. Um, so it should open up. Okay, I'll give it a second. I'm on Visual Studio. Oh, I just uh, broke Visual Studio. It's restarting. So while where this is happening, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the background, before I came, I wanted to make sure that the starter worked. Yep. And there were some stuffs that we did. Yep. Right? Like what, when I'm running like an emulator, by the way, I'm trying to get this open again. Mm -hmm. When I'm running like an emulator, is this like a VM that's running or what's the deal? Yeah, so, so check this out. Hit Windows mm -hmm. and type in um, Android. Android. Now check this out. When you install Xamarin, click on Visual Studio Emulator for Android. Okay. So here at Microsoft, there's a lot of different Android emulators. And what we did is we created a Hyper-V enabled emulator. Oh, so I see. So think of it like the old Windows Phone emulators or Windows 10 Phone mobile mm -hmm. emulators. They're running in Hyper-V. So if you have Hyper-V, you want these. Mm -hmm. I have Hyper-V turned off on my phone, so I use the Intel x86 virtualization Google emulators. I see. But both of them work really nice. And what you have open here behind it is the Hyper-V manager. Okay. So essentially think of it as a Hyper-V image, and we just went in and we spruced it up just to make sure it's compatible. And so effectively, this is like a virtual way of pushing everything I'm doing onto an actual physical virtual device. Exactly. Okay. And, and anyway, so, but I could do, I could plug in a device with USB and that would still work too, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I got the project to open. I don't know cool. what happened. So here's the first thing you're going to see if you're in Visual Studio is that's going to say, hey, I want to connect to a Mac, but we're not going to worry about it, so we're just going to hit OK. But this will walk you through if you have a Mac and have Xamarin installed, it'll walk you through that process. It's a three-part process of pairing. And that's cool because I was, I was wondering, because you do this magical thing where the, v, the, little, the little square comes up and mm -hmm. you see the iOS device that's somehow coming from some other Mac device. This right. is what that does that. That's what does that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Here we go. Okay. And this, is, and this is where you would actually connect if you wanted to. Ooh. And it automatically finds uh, Robert's Mac. So it, it uses Bonjour to oh, go. Yeah, so it's just using a, the Apple Bonjour service, and mm -hmm. that's how devices are, are found. And so if I have a device, I just add my Mac, and then I'm yeah, Exactly. It. And I if you had it. a Mac here, it would automatically pop up, or you can add an IP manually. A lot of people also ask, by the way, do I have to own a Mac? Um, I recommend a Mac Mini because they're pretty cheap. Sure. But there's other services. They're not Microsoft services, but they're totally fine to work with Xamarin, such as Mac in Cloud and Mac Stadium. Those are services where you rent a Mac, like renting a VM. Oh, I see. And you can rent a physical Mac hardware because Apple has strict regulations about um, where you can build and compile applications. So in this instance, it's okay. We're going to focus on Android and Windows 10. So uh, do, the, do the right thing, right? I mean, yeah. don't be yeah. doing weird things. No. Do, we should strict to what, stick to whatever. Stick whatever. Whatever Apple says, you don't have to worry about getting rejected from the apps or things sure. like that. So let's zoom in on the, the project structure. That's what okay, I like to always show off let's first. Let's do that. Let me, let me uh, make this go away. Mm -hmm. And then we have everything all happy. Yeah. Boom. So what we have inside of here is we have a shared project that could have also been a portable class library. Is that this here? That's that little double diamond. Okay, double diamond. Double let's, diamond. Let's go in there to the double diamond. Double diamond. I love it. Okay. Now, this is going to have all of our, our models, views, and view models inside okay. of here. So our models are going to be like our speaker data. It's all blank, just implementations. But I set up some boilerplate code. So, so you can drop those down. Yeah, go for it. Some services, views, and view models. Yeah. Okay. And this is, this is these. Now, that's interesting, right? Because traditionally, I thought that, they, that the shared project would never have UI, but with Xamarin Forms, that there's. With Xamarin Forms, you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's what we're going to be doing today is using Xamarin Forms. Okay. So we have all of our normal Xamarin Forms set up, and I've added two pages a speakers page and a details page and a speaker's view model, and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to kind of use. Okay. But if we scroll down, we can see that we still have an Android, iOS, and a Windows 10 project okay, okay. Um, inside of there because nothing is cross-compiled, right? We have our own compiler and optimizer and linker for all of those. Okay. That's important. Now, Xamarin Forms has already been there, so the first thing everyone wants to do is right-click on the solution. Okay. And you want to hit Restore Nugget Packages. Here come the nuggets. Here come the nuggets. Now, this will obviously be extremely fast if you've already had these NuGets installed. Visual Studio caches them around for a bit. Okay. Uh, else, um, it'll download it from the internet really quick. So the other question I have is what are, like, I obviously had someone beforehand make sure that my setup was correct. What are some common things that people are going to run into? Yep. Because someone right now is like, why is it? What are some common things that they need to look, that are, they run into? Yeah, so a few common things that people run into is, 
Um, one, they don't have Xamarin installed, so, oh. so it won't open. It'll <laughs> say, "It'll say, uh, hey, this thing doesn't uh, isn't working." It'll yeah. be it'll be unloaded. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you have Xamarin installed. Okay. Um, and if you do File New, you'll see Android and iOS apps with Xamarin installed. Emulators for Android are always a problem. iOS is pretty straightforward because they're always installed on a Mac when you install Xamarin and Xcode. But Android emulators are always a pain in the butt. So we install a few for you, um, the Visual Studio Android emulators, and sometimes other tooling will install some Google ones. Uh -huh. Sometimes that's a pain. Um, the Hyper-V ones are super nice, but sometimes the, it's using a virtual network card. And that broke for me. That broke for you. How I did got, you, you just plug it into so, the internet? No, what happened was I went to this thing called a virtual switch manager, mm -hmm. and then I added an external connection that hooked up to my USB uh, in, uh, uh, Ethernet cord, and then I went over to the actual emulator, went to settings, and in settings, I had to add a network adapter. Oh, okay. And you see that network adapter is connected to the external one that, mm. that I set up. And so that's what happened. And then, because I was trying to run the demo to see if it would connect, and it wouldn't. And it, you know, it, like I didn't want us to sit here and troubleshoot that because that's boring. Yeah. But just FYI, if you run into these problems, that's how I fix this. And we have really good kind of walkthroughs of how to use Android emulators and install the Google ones and things like that. But that's always what people run into. If you launch the Google ones and they're not the, the, the Intel x86 really fast ones, if you have Hyper-V turned off, then it takes like forever minutes to load. Mm -hmm. Where the Hyper-V ones are really fast because they're powered by Hyper-V. So often I just say, you know, you can buy an Android device too. You can get a really cheap Moto E or Moto G, which are 50 bucks, something mm -hmm. like that. Or your Android phone, you plug it in, Put it in developer mode. You tap a button ten times. You're a developer. That's all it takes. Oh, okay. You're well, good to go. I, I have to. I have to figure that out because that that would like. There's nothing like. I mean, having the thing in your hand and then yeah. being. It, it feels a little more real to real. me, I guess. Yeah. But, but I, I like this way of doing it too. Yeah. All right. Yep. Cool. All right. Awesome. So now what we want to do is we're going to create an application that goes to the internet, gets a bunch of speakers um, from the internet. It's JSON. We're okay. Deserialize that. Um, so the first thing we want to do is set up our speaker. Okay, so right. that would be under model. Yeah, under model. So you're gonna go into. That's uh, actually my nickname too. Like the producer calls me a model, model. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. just. Well, so you it, are really, really especially with the shirt. It's actually my mom. I mean, really, it's not her. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what do I do here? All right. So we have a few things. When you're when you're going along at home, I'm gonna put the the little readme side by side stuff here. Okay. So I've set up the JSON essentially. So when you go into hands on lab. Okay. Hands on lab. Yep. I clicked it. There we go. Now as we scroll down, we've already restored our NuGet packages. See how nice this is? Here's our model. Our model um, um, has some strings. So all strings, name, description, website. And just like that, boom, we have our model set up. Okay. And this is just a regular class. Nothing special. Got it. Now you'll notice below though, there's like, what is this version Azure-y thing? Okay. Now there's some extra exercises we set up inside of the Dev Days lab. Um, where you can actually add an Azure back into your application. You can add facial recognition oh, okay. into your application. So bonus project. So when Dev Days ends, it continues. Sure. Right? That's the thing. All right, perfect. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to start, with, this is super simple, right? If you've created a model before, we have a name, description, website, a title, an avatar. Got it. What we want to do is go into the view model. Essentially, let's write some code for our code behind. Now, the view model in MVVM is the thing that goes between wherever we're getting the data and the actual view, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. And, and think of it like this is your user interface is going to have some labels, some buttons, some lists, and things like that on it. And you want a way to essentially communicate back and forth. And the first thing, Brandon went through this a little bit, and like you just did here, we implemented I notify property change. Let's pump up this font a little bit. Yes, Let's sir. See, maybe 120%. Let's do it. 120. You're the boss. 120. New, my, my favorite feature of 20. 15 too is that it'll, it'll continue on every tab too. Oh, good, good. Yeah, it does that. So I notify property changes is the first thing you implement. It. And this is kind of the base of MVVM. It gives Xamarin Forms a hook, essentially an event to say, hey, we can trigger property change. Xamarin Forms will listen for those and it'll update the user interface. Got it. So when you're typing something or you set a property, it will update automatically. It's a way of being able to notify both ends that something's happening. Exactly. Okay. Okay. But without having to to like strictly um, create a hard link, okay. right? It's a, it's a soft link, if you will. So you could replace your user interface, with, you could d delete your user sure. interface, start new, and you just bind to these properties. And then the other thing is that, the question I have is, it looks like we're 
implementing the iNotify property changed, but sometimes there's like libraries we can use that yep. do all this stuff for us, right? Like Prism yep. or, or MVVM Lite or whatever, right? Yeah, and often what I'll do is we only have one view model in this um, application, but I usually have a base view model, which I put all my common things. I usually have like a title, an icon, a is busy property. Got it. So I'll put all those things so I don't have to implement them once. Right. But I like to do this very verbose because I think if, if you start adding all these frameworks, like Xamarin Forms has MVVM built in, but if you start adding all these frameworks, it kind of hides how it works. Right, it's better to know. You know At least to begin with. All right, so what we have to do now is we create a void. So if you've any done, done WPF, we've, if you've done um, Silverlight, if you've done any of these MVVM frameworks, UWP, we, we need to, a way to trigger um, um, our property changed event. So we're gonna implement a method here, this is in the readme called uh, property changed. And what we're going to do here is, this is really cool, this is my favorite part, we're going to do this one here. We just, we want to use, the, we're in 2015, oh, so we're going to use oh, a span. Oh, we're going to, we're going to go full arrow, man. Yeah, so we're, we're just going to use an arrow, which is essentially an expression body member, and we're going to say property changed, which is our event, question mark doth, which is a null check, invoke. Boom. Yep, and then we can pass down this as our actual sender. And then new. New property changed event args, and pass in the name. Now, do you know what this does? Right? Yes. This is this is this is awesome. So because it's just a one-line method, right? What happens is you don't want the extra curly braces, and so this arrow says this function is implemented like this. Yep. We're using the Elvis operator to see if anyone's attached to the event handler, and if it does, we're going to invoke it with this as the sender and this property change event arc. And I think this has the name of the property. So for example, for us, it might be description or name or ID. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes exactly, exactly. Yes, I, like I said, I went to school, it was online, I got a degree and I became a Jedi master at the exactly. same time. At the same time. It was time. an online school of computer <laughs> science. So I love pretty, it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. And, and this is really important because essentially Xamarin Forms is gonna subscribe to this event, property changed event, property changed event. Mm -hmm. And we now can call our on property change for whatever we want, for anything that we're going to create, and then Xamarin Forms will listen. Now that Elvis operator is super important because if no one subscribes and we're doing unit tests, mm -hmm. it's going to be null. Oh, So yeah. that null check makes sure that it doesn't blow up, right. essentially. So let's use it. Now that we have our property change method, All right. we want to create an is busy method. I always like to say is busy. On the view model, right? On the view model. Okay. Yeah, so underneath it we can create, first we need to create a backing field. So we'll create a okay, Boolean probably. called busy, a, a private one first. Oh yes, I gotta do that. I gotta yeah. do, uh, we, we, private, okay. Private so. bool. Private bool busy. Lowercase busy. Well, however you wanna do it. Uh, oh. Seth has gone with the old school classic <laughs> did underscore. I, did I just go old school uh, underscore private? Just did a little underscore private I'm a little old there. school, okay. It's okay. all right. Private bool busy. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna do a public property uh, public, a bool, a bool uh, busy, and mm -hmm. then we have a get, and then we have a return underscore old school code yep. here, and then we also have a set that we do uh, here, and then we're saying busy equals value. Mm -hmm. But my guess is that now we have to do something else though, right? Yeah, I like to call it is busy, by the way. Oh, But that's just me. Now oh, here's why I always no, do shoot, I busy and is busy, because a lot of people will miss and put Put busy down here and it capitalize and you get a stack overflow. Got it. So yeah, so is busy. I, I like to be very like, it's a Boolean, is this, is that, is this, right? Yeah, because I forget all the time. I'm like, wait, yeah. what does false mean? Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> you never know. What is a Boolean? I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So we've set it, but when we set it, Xamarin Forms need to know. So mm -hmm. we can call our method. Boom. Oh, I see. And this... Uh, this color member name will yeah. automatically fill that, that stuff in. Exactly. That's magical. Yep. I so, didn't know that. That's yeah, actually so, cool. So now what you could do is, so this on property change, we could implement this in one of three ways. We could do a hard-coded string. So we could say is busy in quotes. Okay. We could do name of is busy, which mm -hmm. also works. Or since we implemented caller member name, we don't have to worry about it and we just say on property change. Okay. Which okay. is super cool. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, that's nice. Now, if you want, if you, if you want to um, say other things are going to blow up, mm -hmm. and we want to property change other things, then you would put those strings or name ups in there. Oh, I see. So, for example, yeah. like if you have two dependent, like if you have miles and then, and then uh, time and then other miles per hour, you want to make sure that they're all changed. Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Perfect.
So this is kind of nice. This is showing you the structure of a simple property that's in there. Okay. Now what we want to do is, again, we're going to go to the internet. So now we're, we're scrolling down here. We've done that. Look at it. We're cranking Look through this. This thing. is just amazing. It's busy, right? Okay. It's as if I hand curated this entire read. Yeah, I know. It's like you, it like you wrote this. Yeah. I wrote it. Yeah. I wrote it. Oh, look at this. This is, has the old method here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So it'll show you if you have older versions of Visual Studio there. There we go. Okay. Yep. Hit me. Go ahead. I mean, you can, you, you can run this thing, right? Because you're here. All right. So now, okay. So now, okay. I see. So now, because we're going to have probably a list of speakers show up, yep. we need to have on the view model an observable collection of speakers. Yes. Now, an observable collection is, is a list, but it's observable, mm -hmm. which means that it essentially has collection change and notifications built in for us automatically. So it has like on property notified kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. And Xamarin Forms can subscribe to that automatically. Um, and what's important here is that it's these properties is busy mm -hmm. and speakers mm -hmm. are public. Right. Because they have to be public so Xamarin Forms can actually see them. Got that's it. what's important. Remember that. Now notice our underscore busy is private because that's our field, not right. Xamarin Forms. Right. You can only see public. Okay. Cool. All right, so now we got that. I want to create a constructor. Oh, so we that's can right. Initialize it. That's right. Yeah. So we will. I always do them after my events because, again, I am old speaker view model, and yeah. then we're going to say speakers equals new kapow. Come out, boom, done. Bun. So that way it's initialized, it's not going to be null, we'll be good to go. That way it's not throwing exceptions when you run the thing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. Awesome. All right, so now we can now create a method to actually get our speakers. Okay. So um, that's going to be a private uh -huh. an async task, get speakers. And this is an asynchronous task because we're going off on a background task, a background thread, going to make HTTP, HTTP request calls, mm -hmm. going to be pulling this in, et cetera, et cetera. Okay into this application. And the first thing we want to do is check is busy. So that way if someone jams on your button, this is kind of, uh, I like to say that this hands-on lab is James' best approach and practices mm -hmm. and how I've developed apps for the last five years. Um, we have an awesome book by Charles Petzold mm -hmm. about building apps with oh, Xamarin yeah, Forms. Really cool. He's amazing. Like um, I got the first one when it was like the first time printed. At, yeah. It was at the second Xamarin Evolved that he yep. did it. Yeah. yeah, it's super great. So. That's a free book you can find on the developer portal. But what we did here is we started to use our is busy immediately because if is busy is true and someone's jamming on the button, we don't want to call. We don't want to call it multiple times. Okay. So now what we can do is we can set up some scaffolding here. Okay. And what we're going to do is just um, do our try. Yeah. We don't even need to save out our exception because we're, we're going to do fancy Visual Studio 2015. Okay. Yeah. So try is busy equals true. Yep. So the first thing we do, no matter what, is set it to true. Okay. Now we're going to add a catch in there and a finally. Catch error X. Oops. I said error, but it's exception. Exception. Exception error. And then finally. This is so that, like, because this is the most dangerous part of the code because we don't yeah. know what could happen. We want to make sure we have everything covered. Could be offline, right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep. Exception. And then is busy equals false because we want to and then what's cool is that if we have some ui element that's mm -hmm. triggered by that this will automatically notify okay jackpot exactly boom perfect all right so now what we need to do is start actually implementing some stuff so um i've set up a little um a little web server on mockable.io mm -hmm. that allows you to go out and download this data so we're going to oh. use http client here all right and my guess is it's going to be in the Oh, in the, no, in no, the no, catch, no, no. exactly. No, no. O only oh, 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 when, oh. when something goes terribly Ooh. wrong. Yeah. I almost broke yeah. everything. So, so what you can do is, you know, you want to, this, this, this very beautiful demo, 4404479, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's what I would have called that's it. That's what I would have called yeah. it. I was on the free account. Mm -hmm. You can open that in a browser, and you can actually see the JSON that we're going to download, right? Oh, there you go. There you go. So you can open it, and it'll open it in probably... Visual code. Studio Code. Yeah, there you go. Boom. My favorite JSON of course. Uh, browser. Here we go. So Boom. there it is. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, so, so you know it's real JSON. It's coming from that from the internet. And now what we need to do is this line of code. We've created a new HTTP client. It'll be cleaned up automatically. Some people debate if you should put it in a using statement. It's mm -hmm. up to you. Whatever you want to do. Yep. It doesn't really matter on mobile. Um, we await. We go off on a background task. We do this back. Just like I did in the, the Bing search earlier in Dev Days Live. Um, and we have JSON. 
So now we need to deserialize that puppy. I and, see. And t convert it to items Got it. for our speaker items. Because right now it's just a blob of JSON. And we can use our most popular friend, JSON.net, to do so. Did I already, do we already have that thing? Yeah, so drop down the Android references there. Okay, reference. Boom. Whole lot of references. See what I did there? What? All the nougats. I see. And okay. Newtonsoft will be inside of there. Okay. It should be. We haven't built it yet, so don't worry about it being question mark. There it is. Mark. Boom. If you've, okay. ne if you've never met the dude that did this, he's like the most understated guy in the universe. James Newton King. Yeah, I, I, I asked him, hey, does anyone ever call you uh, Jason? And he gave me the stink eye. I'm not going to yeah. lie. He gave me the stink eye. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. So now what we want to do is this is going to return a list or an innumerable of speakers to us. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to say var items and then deserialize it, right? So JSON convert dot deserialize object. Convert dot deserialize object. Yep. And I don't use the async version. It's up to you back and forth. And what I do here is I do a list of speakers. So I, I tell okay. it what it is, right? So it's a list of speaker. So lots of uh, templating here, but it's returning an I enumerable or whatever it's coming back. And then we have our JSON goodness, boom. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So this is assuming now that we've made the web request, we've gone up and did it, mm -hmm. we now have our, our items, and now all we need to do is add those to our speaker observable collection. Ah. So we can, first what we can do is clear out our speakers. So speakers. Speakers.clear. Yep, that's going to clear out everything. Xamarin Forms is going to get notified that it's empty. And so you have nothing in our list. And now we can for each over each of those oh, items. Oh, shoot. I used to have a other tool oh, on wow. here, but I did not put it on. For each uh, var s in items, right? Speaker.add. And every time we add one of these puppies, it's going to notify that boom, there's boom, no boom, boom. Okay. Now, this is actually pretty important because. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, well, what if I'm downloading 10,000 items from the internet and I want to put them in a list? Am I going to get 10,000 notifications and, and Xamarin.Forms is going to try to load that 10,000 times? Well, one, ask yourself, why are you downloading 10,000 items from oh, the internet? Oh, a good question. Good question. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a me problem. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? That's like, a, that's like me. Like, I shouldn't be doing that stuff, okay? Yes, shouldn't be doing that. Uh -huh. uh, maybe think of using a service like Azure to do offline sync and background syncing. Mm -hmm. But um, this will actually trigger a notification for every time we add an item. The one of the downfalls of observable collection is that it doesn't handle adding large groups to it. Mm -hmm. So you can do a few things. You could create a new observable collection. In my source code, I uh, and on my GitHub, I've actually created something called an observable range collection. Oh, I see. Where I implement add range, replace range, and that'll clear it out automatically. So if you're like, oh man, this list view is loading a little slow. Why is that? Well, it's probably because you're loading a few hundred items. Now inside that's of, a you problem. That's a you problem, yeah. and that's an observable collection problem, really. That's <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I like so, to say. It should yeah. be smart. I, we, but I'm a programmer. It's someone yeah. else's fault. Yeah, okay. It is. Come on. So check out my Git. I have a new Git library called MVVM Helpers. It, it's on my GitHub, mm -hmm. and it works in any project: Xamarin Forms, non-Xamarin Forms, UWP, WPF. It doesn't matter, and I, I implement a bunch of stuff. All right. So we're basically good. But what happens if something goes wrong, Seth? Well, we go to the exception area. And you do nothing, right? Yeah. Like a good de developer does. <laughs> You're just like, yeah. hey, we caught it, okay? Hey, we look, I'll, I'll throw it and make everyone mad. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's like it's not even there. Well, what we can use, actually, is something built into Xamarin Forms um, on our main page. We can display an alert. Now, I see. this is kind of demo code, so we're just going to kind of attach and say that, hey, we're always in an app if something goes wrong here. Okay. But what we could do is we could actually say await. Oh, and we can say application, which is a static in Xamarin Forms, okay. dot current, current, dot main page. Main page. And built into Xamarin Forms is a way to display a sheet of data or an alert to our user. Ooh. Hey. Yeah. So you can display an alert. Okay. So display alert. And this is, I'm literally just going to do x dot message here. Yeah, you have a title and a message oh, and, a, and a oh. cancel button. Error. Yep. Error. And then I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Boom. That'll pop up a display natively on each platform. So you said something interesting, and I want to make sure that because you said it really fast. Mm -hmm. You you said okay when I'm doing this, I'm assuming that blah is the reason why you're saying that because we're actually doing this in the middle in the base one, and we can't like if we have a different kind of an application on top, we can't assume that that exists there. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And is there yeah. a way to test for that? I mean, how do I test that? 
who's who's using me? I mean, exactly. how, do you, how do you test that? So check it out. You could do this. You could do above that line. Mm -hmm. You could do if if application, application dot current question mark dot question mark dot main page. Uh huh. If any of that equals equals null. Oh, right? or if it doesn't, right? Yes, because if your app if your app's not running, the current application will be null, or your main page will be null. Right. And then you could throw the ex here. Oh, I see. And then that way, in your unit tests, you could actually go ahead and ensure that that you are expecting an application to blow up. Now, oh, ideally, you may probably write an interface, and you may have like some messaging service um, built into it. But this is a pretty nice way, really easy. That's way where you get it. your architect to write a yep. lot of useless code. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, wait, useful. See, I meant useful. useful. I said, you, useful did code. I say useless? Exactly. Okay. All right. So we're basically good um, for our business logic of our application, but we need to do one more thing okay. before we can write UI. Is we need a way. Remember, this method here is a is a private task. Yeah, we need a, a way to execute it, right? Exactly. Okay. So we're going to create a public command called get speakers command. Okay, so I'll put that up here. Yeah, go for it. Public, uh, public command. By the way, if you have questions, please get them in uh, now. Yep. Get the speakers command, and we're gonna get set this. And this is a way of marshalling sort of events back and forth, right? Exactly. Okay. And then we can actually, I usually just like to create them in the constructor, okay. um, which is a nice easy way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And Xamarin Forms has a built-in I command implementation called command. Okay. Uh, maybe people may be used to something like relay command or a few other things built into MVVM Lite. Any implementation of I command is what Xamarin Forms will listen to. I see. So we're going to essentially implement a new command, and there's two things that you can pass in. The first one essentially is we need to call our method. Here. Okay. Now we do have to use a very we have to do the async await type thing here just because command is expecting a method and this is a way to get around it to say get speakers and that'll call it. Okay. Now we handle all the exceptions so we're good. Okay. Now notice here zoom in on that puppy if you can. Boom. Do we the, oh there we go. Awesome. So notice that there's an action to execute and a funk of bool oh, yes. for can execute. Because this makes it so that when, because goofball is going to be pushing the button over and over and over again, we want to be like, hey, 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 slow your roll. Exactly. Okay. This is the slow your roll funk, funk bool. Exactly. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to return a funk, okay. which is like a little lambda, and we want to say, hey, you're only able to execute if you're not busy. Boom. Perfect. Okay. Right? So the opposite of is busy. Okay. Right so there. It's a little it. bit weird syntax, but once you write a few of them, it doesn't look so weird. No, but see, th if I write code like this, people think I'm like really earning my money. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Like, what, does that even, what does that even mean? It looks great. I don't know, but it works. <laughs> so there's one more thing we need to do. Okay. Before we get to the UI, is that we did this funk of is busy, but we need to actually tell Xamarin Forms when to reevaluate that funk. Okay. So what we can do is back in our is busy setter, mm -hmm. underneath on property changed, we can say get speakers command dot change can execute. Boom. And that's just a method you call, and that will reevaluate your function. Oh, sense. I see. So hold on. So this maybe hold on. I, I'm saying I see like in the programmer way where yes. we're like, oh, uh -huh. wait a minute. So what <laughs> you're saying. So what you're saying is yeah. that the speakers command is a command object. Change can execute, like what am I changing it to? Is it just like resetting it or? It's gonna reevaluate your funk. Oh, I see, yeah. okay. And it's, there's some state in that command object which says, am I there or not? And what's mm -hmm. happening is every time we do the on property changed, does that go to the command or is this executed every time? It'll, it'll execute this, this funk in the command. Oh, I see. So okay. after we set is busy to true, it'll say, hey, set it, now you can't execute anymore. When we set it to false, it can execute again. Okay. Because Xamarin Forms and other things don't know when to reevaluate. We have to tell it when to reevaluate. Okay. Right, because just because is busy is set, Xamarin Forms is gonna look for property changes of is busy. It doesn't know that the command is tied to is busy because this could be a really complex method, right? Okay. We just made it an opposite of a is busy, mm -hmm. but essentially we're saying, hey, ch update, update can't execute. Essentially, okay. like manually do it. So this will execute the funk in there, and then the state will be okay whether it can do it or not. Jackpot. Okay, okay, got it. Jackpot. Okay. So that's our business logic. Now, what's important here, and why I love starting here, was why I saw a lot of my demos in the C sharp .NET code. 
right? And that's what I like to say. Now at this point, we could be using Xamarin forms or not Xamarin forms, right? We could just be using this and build out a native UI, mm -hmm. or in this instance, we are using Xamarin forms. Like you refactoring this code, I love it. I know. Sorry, I, it's just I not, agree. It's I on like the, it's on the right place. Okay. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, it's got to be right there. Yeah, it's got to be right there. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now we're kind of good for our user interface. We want to actually. So you mean for our view stuff. model, right? For our view model's done. Yep. Okay. We're done. We're done. Okay. Yep. Perfect. And this is like the hard part. This is basically the hard part. Okay. Learning yeah. the UI is learning like the elements that are there, learning a little bit about them, sure. et cetera, et cetera. All right. Cool. So now what we want to do is we're going to start with our speakers page. And that would be under view, right? View, yeah. Okay. I do M, V, V, M. See how they're all nice and Man, ordered there? just like you did it. M, But you, can, you don't have to order them this way, right? Because I no. there's some people like Jimmy Bogard that subscribe to put everything on a feature in one folder. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, there would be a speakers folder, and then you'd have it all in there. You can do that too, right? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Awesome. It's your day. It's all your right, day. Right. There's no special naming or anything like that. Uh, Brandon, for instance, likes to put um, pages for his pages. Oh, I see. Right? <laughs> Instead of a view. Yeah. But for me, I like to say, like, it's a fun during a demo to say, look, it literally spells out MVVM. Oh, it really does. It really does. M. Well, services gets in the way. Dang but it, services. Services. So I'll just take it out. There okay. We go. Perfect. MVVM. MVVM. Okay, got it. Perfect. Got it. So we're going to open up this, and the first thing that we're going to notice is that we have an XM LNS namespace. Uh -huh. um, this is the Xamarin form schema. There That's go. there. Okay. We are developing against a uh, XAML schema from 2009, which is a newer, uh, nice up-to-date spec. Okay. The Xamarin Forms one is from 2014. All right. We have a class name of speakers page, which corresponds to our code behind, and we give it a title right here. Speakers. Speakers. Okay. Got it. So now what we need to do is we're going to lay down a few controls. We're going to lay down a. Um, we're going to lay down. Uh, a button that we can press. Okay. We're going to lay down a little activity indicator spinner. Okay. And we're going to put a list view. Okay. Now, you're not getting any Intelli IntelliSense, and that, that, that kind of stinks. Yeah. So let's see if we can fix that with James's magical approach. Okay. So let's try to build our Android application. Oh, I thought it was, I was going to punch the computer, I, because I've seen you do that before, but that's not what we're doing today. Yeah, not, we're not going to no, do that. Not, not no. when people are watching. Cause yeah. There might be children watching. Go, I don't want to. I don't want to rage punch it's, it. it. Now, when you start to build your Android application, a few things are going to happen right. while while we're waiting on this. Is at this point, um, it's going to try to download. Make sure you have all the nougats in case you forgot to download the nougats ahead of time. Nuget. Nuget. Yeah, the sorry. nuggets and the nuget. The nuget's. It's going to try to pull those down. Okay. Now, uh, it's going to make sure all the references are there. Now, the Android one will take a little bit longer to build. It may take a few minutes, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it's doing behind the scenes is it is essentially going out. Oh, it, it already did and it. And it done. It did it once. Perfect. Okay. So it may have to take a few minutes. So if you see this little thing where it's going and it's building and it's building for a few minutes, don't worry. Continue on with the lab, um, the hands-on lab here, because what it's doing is it's going to Google and downloading the support packages. It only has to do it once. So you okay. may have already done it on this machine. I probably did. So now let's try to close the XAML page and reopen it one more time. And let's wow. see if let's see if we get the IntelliSense. We gotta I gotta find somebody that's like that will be able to like make a sound effect. Like every time I close it, like <laughs> like the old Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. So let's see if we can add a stack layout in here. Stack. Nope, not gonna happen. Layout. That's good. I'll type it. I'll just type <laughs> it in. Cool. So I borked it. Okay. You I borked it. I done. I did. I done something horrible. So we can add a few properties here, and the first one we're going to add is spacing. Uh -huh. We're going to set it equal to zero because we don't want any spacing in between our elements. We don't want it to be stacked up. I, sh I always control shift B. I don't know what's happening, mm -hmm. but I always just do that. Now, what's cool is that our XAML is being ahead of time compiled, too. So when you compile it, if you mistype something here, it'll let you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's okay. So All if right. you spell space, spacing without an S and you're pacing around mm -hmm. with zero paces, It'll tell you. Or just like you have a, a silent queue in spacing, right? Because I thought there might be. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now what we want to do is add a button in there. So that's the first item. I'm very, I'm very upset that we don't have IntelliSense, and I'm sorry. It might just be a Visual Studio close and reopen thing. Who knows? It, it was probably yeah. something I did, man. Yeah, probably. I'm just Gosh. Fresh installs. Boom. Yeah. All right, so here's what we did. We added a button. The text here is sync speakers, and the command has that very familiar binding of a uh, syntax of binding get speakers command. So how does it know, like, how does this view know that it's supposed to use this view model? So there's some code behind for this puppy. Oh. Yeah, so if you drop down that little arrow, oh. there's some code behind. And see what I've cleverly done here oh, for you? Oh, 
sneaky. There you're you jumping go. ahead on us. I like it. But no, yeah, I just had a question. I'm not, I'll go back. I'll, I'll go back. No, this is good. That's a great question. And that's actually what people actually first ask about is like, hey, how do I connect these things together? Mm -hmm. Well, every page, every control has a thing called a binding context. So that's what I've done here is I've created a binding context. I save out our speaker's view model and I set it right there. I see. And all those other libraries are just magically doing some weird injection and pushing things everywhere. Okay. Exactly. Got it. This exactly. Is, this is the way you do it. If it, this is, I mean, this is like gluten free, like free range. Exactly. Pure, pure. MMEM. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. No, no, no preservatives. No, 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 no GMO. No, no. It's just like it's we're straight. hand rolling it. This is yeah. like artisanal. When I get, when I go to QFC in Wallingford, I, I walk upstairs to the gluten, oh, the see? organic section. This is yeah. this is the good this is artisanal yeah. the MVVM. Okay. I only get a few items because it's a little pricey up there, right. but you know, sure, got to get that almond. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's that. All so right. good, lots of calcium. Okay. Um, okay. So now this is cool. This is called an activity indicator. And Seth, you're probably wondering what the heck is an activity. That's indicator. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. It's like you read my mind. So an activity indicator is like a progress bar, and Brandon went over that some of the controls in Xamarin Forms are going to look familiar, and some are going to be a little bit different because okay. they're kind of mobilized. Um, stack layout is like a stack panel. Sure. Right? It's a stack layout. We name all of our lay layouts with layout. Mm -hmm. An activity indicator is like a progress bar. They're kind of named different on each platform. So we went with activity indicator, which is a little spinner. So is there like a place where I can go to see what all these things are? Oh, yeah. Check this out. Go to developer.xamarin.com. Developer.xamarin.com. Now. Mm -hmm. Now scroll down to the Xamarin Forms section, which is right there, and tap on Xamarin Forms. Pow. Now what you can do here is you can go ahead and on the left hand side, notice all these sections. There's a control reference, which is probably what we want. We can go ahead and tap on that. And we can look at pages, layouts, views, and cells. Uh, this see, will show you what this everything This is so does. helpful because mm -hmm. the thing about it is like, you say, hey, you should add a navigation page. I'm like, what the heck does that even look like? Well, yeah. it looks like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. And okay. it's cool too. Go to the view section on the left hand side right Okay, here. views here. Yeah. And just scroll down. Like, check it out. There is what every single hey one is yo. on each platform. Wow, this is amazing. Oh, I just, I just borked it. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Oh, I see. Now you can see what an activity indicator is. All right, so you let's can see what a in. button looks like. Right? There you go. On each of them. And you can literally click. The, oh, and it goes to, like, using it. Yeah. Okay. How cool is that? Yeah, I know, right? Yep. Jeez. All right, so that's, that's awesome. Yep. So, okay, so that, because the first thing I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm like, because right now I'm kind of flying blind, you know, I'm yeah. blindfolded and you're like telling me to, to push down or pull up and I'm flying everywhere, you know, but I want to know like what the buttons do too. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. All right. Now, check out what I did here. Okay. Notice that there's an is running and it is visible property here. Okay. This is my little James secret sauce um, in here. So is busy is obviously, like, is it actually rotating? Like on the screen, this little spinner. Like when we go off on the background thread, when is busy is true, it's going to go ahead and like spin, spin up. Spin, right. But we don't want it to just sit there when we've already loaded the data. Oh, so I'll so. say, I'll also bind the same thing to is visible. Mm, delicious. Yes. The secret sauce is beautiful. Sauce. Yeah. Now you may be wondering, Seth, well, how come you, why don't you only set is visible, right? Why, why do you have to set both? Well, is it because when is running is taking like CP, like, because you got to be more careful, mm -hmm. right? With, mm -hmm. Because like you have this little device and we're not going to be like crunching data and stuff. So you exactly. got to be a little more clever about that. Exactly. You don't want that sitting in the background that's all hidden that is literally just spinning and spinning and spinning and you don't know about it. Okay. okay. Cool. So the next one, this is the big one. Well, the big one. Here we go. The big one. Big one. Now, this is why I like this hands-on lab because everyone at home can be following along right now, copying, pasting, coding, but it's the explanation of why are we adding this is what, sure. what really what Dev Days Live is all about. Okay. So this is a list view. It's like a list box. It's like a table view. It's like a list view. And, and if you want to know what it is, you just go to the... It's in the views. Views, and then you go to... They're alphabetized even. Oh, geez. That's like the... There it is. I was literally on it. I, what the heck? Yeah. Okay. And so we're, we're like making one of these puppies. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Pretty sweet. Yeah, and this is pretty complex because you have data templates, you have cells, you have a bunch sure. of custom views that you can put in here. So what we're doing here is we're giving it an items source and we're doing a binding here to speakers, which is our observable collection. Mm -hmm. What we're also doing is giving it an X name, which people may be familiar with, which essentially is a way of exposing it to our code behind. So we can register events separately if we want to. Oh, I see. So I can do like a, like a list view speakers dot on change plus equals. Exactly. But we really don't want to do that. Isn't that pollute? Like our artisanal mm -hmm. 
artisanal, you know, MVVM was no yeah. longer artisanal if we do that, right? It's true. Yeah, we can, we can, we can not add it. We can go old school on it. No, but I mean, like, yeah. I mean, uh, like, I, I always wonder, like, yeah. like, like sometimes I'm like going with the pattern, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm just gonna sneak this event in there. No one's gonna know. No <laughs> one, no one will look at my code. Is that? Like, is that okay, or should I be more pure? If I'm not as pure, are things going to happen bad in the future? Will you show up in my window, you know, <laughs> you know, throw a rock through my window? I mean, anything like that? Well, so it depends. It depends what you're doing. Uh, if you look at the Xamarin Evolve application, which we open source and I built, uh, I like to sneak a little things. Like sometimes you just got, I had four weeks to write that code in my spare time. It's a beautiful app. Uh, sometimes you just got to ship. Uh, but, you know, ideally, uh, in this instance, you could do other bindable properties. Like we could have a selected item and yeah. bind to that in our view model, so we'll get notifications whenever the selected sure. item changes. So you're saying yeah. make it work, then make it pretty. Yeah, do okay. whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're going to do uh, what's nice is if you're doing like test-driven development mm -hmm. and you're writing your UI, your unit tests and UI tests first, mm -hmm. you're not going to be doing this ever. You're right. literally going to assume that there is no separation. But I say, hey, sometimes it's okay. It's okay. Now, what, what the interesting part here is if you want to be, you'll notice in the Evolve app what I do is I try to have clean separation. So I actually have my XAML UI in a separate library. Oh. Right? So that actually enforces me to use things like Messaging Center and navigation and implementations ah. on my own. Yeah, to do it. Wow, it's like putting blinders on to make sure yeah. you don't look around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Henry comes up and he's like, don't look. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to slap that puppy in there. All right. Uh, and then this thing, which is we already 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 slapped that in. Did oh, I, oh I did. I didn't. Not yet. Jeez, it's like you knew. You are thinking. Yep. You knew. It even says add item template. Okay. Okay. So we go here, and then we're adding this to the sack layout. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now this is saying this is the list view. We're going to bind to the observable speakers. Yep. But you need to tell me what each row looks like, right? Exactly. Okay. So yep. that's what this puppy's for here. Exactly. Okay. Now you can do any custom view cell you possibly want. You can. You can put really complex things inside of this, blah, blah, blah. But we decided to use a built-in image cell okay. um, in here. So we have some ones like text cell and image cell and switch cells that are in here. And that's these little these little gals over here, Under right? cells, yeah, exactly. Oh, yep. okay. And you can actually learn all about them. So we have some built-in optimized ones. So if you have a really simple cell, like obviously you may be doing like card views and like all this stuff and maps and images and crazy stuff. Like, yeah, do that. You can mm -hmm. do whatever you want. And we have optimizations for the list view to even recycle and be really performant. Got it. Um, but the nice thing here is we have a very nice image cell, which essentially is an image with two lines of text. Got it. And notice here that we're binding to the actual speaker, right? Name, title, avatar, not uh, anything in review model. I see. Because, because like this is saying, okay, for each of the speakers in the observable, I want the image cell, the yep. data template image cell, to have the name, the title, and then this is the actual image that you're getting. Exactly. Got it. Now that image is actually just a URL mm -hmm. that points to a PNG or a JPEG. Xamarin Forms will automatically download, cache, um, and handle hey. that for you automatically, nice. just from a URL. Okay. okay. Now you can you can go in and you can uh, tell Xamarin Forms how long you want to keep that image. Maybe it's 365 days. Maybe it's a week. By default, it's one day. So that way, if it's the same URL, it knows how to handle caching that URL. So if you're offline or whatever, it'll just serve it up for you. That's delicious. Yeah, it is super delicious. All right. Yep. Cool. So we've done it. Now, what do we do now? Is Almost. it time to run it? Almost. Okay. 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 Now I'm telling you, like, here's all the stuff that I hid. Um, <laughs> yes. So, so we've created our view model. We've created our page. Now there's that code behind that we, we saw earlier um, for that speaker's page. Here, right? right. And this is that little binding context, et cetera, sure. et cetera. The artisanal MVVM. The artisanal, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so I, just so you know that I'm not hiding anything, that's how it's making the connection. Okay. Now, your application knows how to start up because there's a global app, like an abstraction of what an app is. Okay. And that's actually the app.cs. And where does that live in the, oh, here? In the shared code. Got, oh, wow, it does? Yeah, it lives in the shared code. And what we've done is we said, what is an app? Well, an app has a constructor that gets started up, and you get uh -huh. you get other events like start, sleep, and resume. Oh, okay. And these yeah. are and these and you've actually abstracted it to such a degree that you're just making a common object model for an application that works for an Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. Exactly. Or, or UWP. UWP. Win Windows 10. Sorry. Yeah. Now, what's really cool is if you go into the Android project okay. and drop it down a little bit, and if you go into the uh, main activity. Okay. Now I showed this when I did my demo, but it's also here. 
And this is essentially the startup code for the Android application. So what we're going to see is that I have a, a few layout files that I specify. And then see I have load application, new mm -hmm. app. Which is just loading that, that, loading that, app. that middle, that one, it's not middle, what's it called? The, the base. The shared code. The shared, code. shared that's project. It. That's yep. the one. Exactly. Okay. So it is inheriting here from a forms application, uh, app compat activity, so it uses material design. Um, if you're using the Azure stuff, I initialize it there for you, which we have in the bonus class. And you can, you can add any of your custom code that you may want here. So if I add images or different layouts, drawables, like our launch icon, for instance. And, the, these, are, and these are like be different. You, these have, they don't necessarily have to be different, but generally they're different for. Yeah, and that's a good question too. Um, like a lot of people say like, hey, can't I just put all my images in a shared, in a shared area? Well, like you can, but iOS, Android, and Windows handle the different resolutions differently. Sure. You probably want different icons for each right. application. So it's best practice to do that. Now, if you have an image, like there's actually a thing called an image, mm -hmm. a view, a, a control, and if you specify like seth.png, it will say, hey, first, is it in my like, is it in my shared code? Like is it in my embedded resource? Oh, it's not. Okay, let me look in the Android, iOS, and Windows project for Seth.jpg, oh, and then it'll try to find the correct uh, resolution. Cool. So now we can essentially. Now, run the was app. was yeah. this something that I that I wrote, or is this something that you wrote, or is, like generally when mm -hmm. I do a blank Android project, is this going to be there? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be there on my. So if you do file new project, mm -hmm. we won't create it, but no, I'll show you where file. this came from. Oh, I did website because I'm an idiot. Well, you, well, you uh, sometimes uh, need a website uh, for your backend. Uh, uh, Oh, are, are we live? Is this live? This is live. This uh, is happening. Oh, this is happening right now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So fi file new uh, pr uh, project. project, and then cross platform. Cross platform. Boom. This is what I created. I created a a blank Xamarin Forms XAML app. The one that you actually have highlighted, which is kind of oh, funny. Hey, that one right there. This one. That's it. That's what Pow. I created. Wow. There you go. That will okay. create your iOS, Android, UWP, and your shared code. And it'll set up all the stuff that you need. So you don't have to write any other additional. Code. It's the granddaddy of them all. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Okay. So theoretically now I should be able to run it. Theoretically. This is the fun part that I did um, at every dev days is, is I said, let me make sure that it works on my machine first. And then we'll try to run around and help everyone with their emulators. So I just did a build. Yep. And now it built. I'm going to hit good. play. Yep. Like how do I know which one? Does this one have to match the, the one? Okay. It requires the internet. Okay. So inside of that debug bar, it'll show you any Google emulators or any Visual Studio emulators for Android. That are any, running or that are just there? That are there. Okay. Okay. And here in the Hyper-V one, it'll launch it. So if it's not running, it'll launch it and it'll spin it up. Okay. So let me go to Hyper-V Manager while this is happening. So that's this thing right here. Yep. This installs whenever I do the, when I actually install Xamarin. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. Yep. And, and that little other application, um, this one. that one, this lets you download additional images that are there. So other types of Android devices. Okay, so. If you're like, oh, I need a new marshmallow or yeah. a nougat or some other delicious treat from, mm -hmm. from Google, I would like to, uh, to test it. Yeah. So last time I did this, this is probably a couple years ago, this took like 50 years to, like I literally left and then came back after a trip and then it was still running. <laughs> exactly. Like is it, why is it so fast now? It's Hyper-V. It's super virtualized. It's using the full power of your machine. Oh. This is essentially a, whatever this is, it's essentially an Intel i7 processor. It's like, boom. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so this speaker's thing at the top is, you get that by virtue of it actually being a view, right? Mm -hmm. Like this view had the title in there, and that's what's going to be put up there, right? Exactly. And notice in the app.cs, I put it in a navigation page so we can do navigation. Oh. And that's what's giving it the title bar. Right there, navigation page. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so you sort of encapsulated the whole thing. Got yep. it. And okay. that's the root page. This is the starting point. That's clever. There's our beautiful button. Should I push it? Push it. Did we get that little spinner. What? Boom. Boom. Hey, this is my first real application. How come? How come I'm not in here? I know. I need to add you. I need to go in there and then no, add. That's add uh, sad. I just like yeah. where's where are you, man? I know. I'm not even in here. You should put yourself in there, man. <laughs> I should. Uh, while we'll do this, well, yeah. I'm, you should like literally be in here, buddy. <laughs> like, if anyone but you. Okay. I know. I didn't. I didn't want to just put my face in every single possible. You know. You know you should. Okay. I should. Yep. Okay. So every time I hit sync speakers, it's actually going to bring it down again, right? 
Yep, exactly. Now it's going to be the same data that's on there, um, which is pretty, which is pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can modify this data in real time. Oh, oh, oh here we go. Here. here we go. All right. Here we go. Um, I'm going to try to. I'm going to go into. I'm inside of the portal where I okay. can have this. This thing and what is here. this thing called? It's called Mockable.io? Mockable.io. It, it's so it's, handy. It's actually pretty slick. Mockable.io. Not going to lie. .io. Yep. Free shout out. I'm just yep. saying. Free shout out. Shout out. Okay. And it's a free service. That's why it has that long URL mm -hmm. that's in there. But uh, uh, it's there. I'm going to go ahead and add myself in here because you apparently yes. want me to prove Yes, I want slide. you to be in there, okay. and I want to make sure that this is not some funny demo, man. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to add myself in here. Okay. Right. Listen, things are going to explode. Yeah. But that's okay. You asked for it. I did so. ask for it. But, and, and the other thing is it looks really nice. Yeah, it's a, out of the box. Like, that's what the experience that you get. Um, and while I do this, how about you run the UWP version of it? Set that as your startup and try to run it. Should I stop it and then do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. Yep. So let me do this. So set a startup project and then hit play. Did just do local machine? I always like to do local machine. That way it's, it's going to be, it's a UWP app, so you can move oh, it around, right? smart, yeah. yes. Yep, exactly. Jess and Didi. Yep. Yep. Yep, I'm going to try to grab my... There's the, there's the Xbox, the, uh, the, the original Xbox <laughs> that you do. Exactly. There you go. So sync speakers, and there they is. Look at that. Yeah. And it's cool because like the modality is a little bit like like this feels Windowsy. Yeah. And well, this is closed down because I stopped it, but the other one feels more Android E, right? Because they're actually, you know, um, real native applications mm -hmm. um, that are running on each platform. All right, so let me go in here. Let me go ahead and update my image. Okay. Update my avatar. That's done. I'm gonna leave a bunch of Matt's information in here, and that's okay. So let me let me do this, and I'm going to do this in the universal one. So let's just start it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's the original Xbox, and then I'll hit sync speakers while okay. you're still typing. So just to see that everything's there. And what's cool is that this lets you sort of, like, is there a way as you're typing? And I know you're typing stuff. Is there a way to like dis, like? Change the layout depending on the size of the actual screen because they might be on a mm -hmm. they might be on an uh, iPad for example or yep. a or a bigger Samsung device. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you how do you know? Is it? It's a good question. So actually, if we jump back in the code, okay. um, really quick, you could actually right here do something and type in uh, a keyword for me, mm -hmm. and you can do uh, device device dot dot. And inside of here, there's two important keywords: idiom and OS. So Xamarin Forms, this is the Xamarin Forms ism here, and you can say if it equals equals, right? So you can say if that equals target idiom dot desktop, tablet, uh, or phone, mm -hmm. and you could specify the user interface. You can do this in the XAML with platform kind of implementations. So you can say on Android, do this little thing. On uh, tablet, do this little thing. And then same with the yep. platform yeah. stuff. Yeah, I have a nice little blog post about optimizing for tablets, okay. which is kind of kind of optimizing for. Um, bigger screens like this too. Sure. But as you move that, if you launch the UWP application again, and you move it around and move it around, Xamarin Forms will automatically rescale everything for you. Right. Now I've added myself in here, and we're going to see if it works. All right, so yeah. I, I am, I'm going to rescale this first to yeah, show you. Yeah. yeah, see how the, the button automatically, it, it's there, and it, it's the full screen that we've set it up, and boom, there's there, me. Oh, Happened. boom. Real. Look at this. You're so happy when you're I am, pixelated. I'm so pixelated and happy. There you right go. Right there. In a circle. Yes. Yeah. In a circle. Yeah, cool. Exactly. All right. So that's so that was that was just to give you a sense that this is not. It's like it's, it's really real. pulling it from the internet. Yeah. But it is a fake stub. But you would yeah. definitely like eventually connect that to the internet or do whatever. Exactly. Right? You connect it to Azure and you do this stuff. Because eventually, if you're doing REST, if you're doing a RESTful call, you're effectively doing a GET on a page just like you're doing right here anyways yeah. and getting JSON back. It's just getting JSON back. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hey, we had a few questions about performance and a few things like that. Okay. Um, one thing I'll say, go back to our documentation. We've yes, been sir. making great strides in performance as Amber Forms. When you go to the views, mm, uh, there again. There you go. And you look at that list view. A lot of applications are a lot of list views. So when you mm -hmm. go to list view, you're going to notice that there, there is um, item view, list view. Tap on the list view documentation. Boom. So this right here gives you all of the different use cases, and there's tons of stuff on that left-hand side. 
Cell appearance, list appearance, interactivity, and performance is super important. Oh. This is like really detailed. In Xamarin Forms, we have caching strategy, we have the ahead of time compilation of the XAML, we tell you how to optimize your cells, we have videos on it, because that's, that's a lot of things. People kind of get real excited, like, I'm gonna do all this data, I'm just gonna shove all these crazy cells and do 100 data bindings in a cell. I'm like, yeah, it's gonna slow down your app because that's really costly. Sure. So I can only do so much. So read this document. I also have a video Ooh. right here on Channel 9. On Channel I don't know, 9. I've heard of Channel 9. I've, I've heard of there's some weird people that are there, yes. Yeah. I have a whole Xamarin show on Xamarin Forms performance. So Xamarin show. Yeah. That is the first one. Pow! Pow. Channel, Channel 9. Right there. Okay. So, I mean, we're already at, we, I do these really cool things. I do full episodes that are about a half an hour to 40 minutes Snack long. pack. Snack pack, baby. Yeah, that's that's the, the awesome. Snack pack. I, I, snack packs are little five to 10 minute videos covering a specific topic. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend you check this out. Over the next few weeks, I have a few snack packs lined up that I'm super excited about. Covering Android emulators, talking it. about workbooks. Check it out. You should watch um, them like 18,000 times each. Exactly. Just saying. There All right. Go. Cool. So we are we've gotten pat we've gotten something rolling, we've yep. got something getting some data. Bam, bam, bam. Now what do we want to do next? Do some navigation. We want oh, to learn right. about navigation. Of course. This is kind of important. Sure. So what we want to do here is we want to this is I'm just gonna do a little click handler here. Okay. We're cheating. This is, we're cheating. But it's we okay. want to get it done. We want to get it done. Wanna get it done. When you have ninety minutes, you only got so much time. That's right. So what we're going to do is we've exposed that list view to the code behind, and we're opening up the speakers page .xamlcs, and we're adding a little click handler here. Let's so right here, am I yep. in the right spot? You're in the right spot. Tab, 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 boom, 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 done. Awesome. Okay. So now what you can do is uh, open up the details.xaml page. Yes, so sir. It's empty. All right. Of course. But open up the code behind for it. Let's do it. Pow. Boom. Now I wrote a little bit of code here. You can now create a speakers page, and you're going to pass it a speaker. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, because the detail when we click, I think I see what you're doing. You want to make it so that when we click on each of an item on the list, it'll go to a page with just that speaker. Exactly. Money. So you can learn a little bit more about that speaker. Money. Uh, in there, very master detaily, right? Right. In there, and you would normally create a speaker view model or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, we're not changing any data. We're just displaying it. We're just literally using the actual uh, uh, model. Uh, Version. Exactly. The model class. Why, why can't model I speak class. today? What's yeah. going on? A little model class. Okay, let's so do you're it. good. Yep. So now what you can do is you can implement this puppy. Okay. Right? We don't want to throw an exception. So the first thing I like to do is I always like to try to see if the selected item is null oh, or not. Oh, so I see. Item, yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is going to be very upset with you because you've implemented and not copied code because you didn't put an async on that thing. <gasps> right oh, above that void. Oh, my goodness. Now you're probably saying async void. Everything I've ever read is, oh, don't do that. But it's except, okay. Except if you've watched the Lucian Wishick stuff, mm -hmm. the top level ones, it's okay. You gotta do but it. But never in the never middle. middle. Never, you never async void. That's like throwing things into a black hole. Exactly. Okay. That's why we async tasked in the beginning. Exactly. Okay. So check what I'm doing here. Um, we get the selected item changed event args back. Mm -hmm. And that should be a speaker. So we just cast it as a speaker, check sure. against null. Okay. Yeah. And then navigation.push async. Oh, is navigation like this root level object for the application? Oh, yeah. So every, I see. Every page that has a navigation page has navigation. But, you, but the cool thing is that it looks like it's attached to any visual element. Mm -hmm. So can you say button.navigation? <laughs> I mean, you don't want to do that, right? You probably don't want to do that. But okay. uh, technically, the implementation at some point could actually do that, right? Okay. Oh. Yeah. But now, notice, go ahead and do navigation dot. Let's take a look at what's in there. All right, let's see what we got up in here. Yeah, you can do it right navigation now. Navigation dot. Oh. It, oh I, it's because I'm uncoding everything. Oh. Hold on, so let me see here. All right. Welcome to another episode of Seth Typing. <laughs> navigation dot. There, there we you go. go. So we can do a few things in here. Xamarin Forms knows about um, modal um, pages and non-modal pages. Mm -hmm. So you're able to push async, pop async, push modal, pop modal. You can rearrange pages that are inside of there. It's pretty crazy. So is this like, I'm feeling like this is like a stack thing. Mm -hmm. So you might be on page A and you navigation push to page B, mm -hmm. you navigation push to page C, mm -hmm. and then when you hit back, you handle that event and just pop it. Exactly. And, and we'll handle it. hardware button presses for you automatically. 
and software button presses. But if you have a login that you need to push, that you would push, or maybe you need to have a close button because you have a save button, uh -huh. you could just say pop async and it'll pop off the current page. I see. What if you have to do complex navigation? How do you clear the stack? So you're able to essentially get access to the entire modal and navigation stack. Oh. And you can just pop off, you can rearrange things. And it's like and, a, it's an yeah. I enumerable. It looks yeah, exactly. Like. So you could for each the all page. of them and that pop. makes perfect sense. Yep. Okay, well there you go. Whoever's Ooh. writing this is a genius. We also have great documentation on navigation. Go Ooh. figure. Literally everything that we're doing here, we have documentation for. Why would you document stuff like that? And samples and workbooks. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that works. Works. Workbooks things is legit. Yeah. I'm just saying that right it's now. All right. Great. So we're pushing async, but I feel like once we do that, we have the bindings. We have a new the speaker. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, speaker's page. Uh, sorry, where is that? The detail page loaded up yep. because we're getting it and we're setting the binding context. But it's going to be a blank page right now. It's right? going to be a blank page. Okay. Okay. I mean, you can run it and see if you want to. It's up oh, to you. It's, it's your day. Oh, it's my it's my day. It's I'm day. learning. It's I'm learning this stuff. All yeah. right. So I hit play the original Xbox here. <laughs> the original Xbox. <laughs> so, classic Xbox. Classic, classic. Classic Xbox. I hit sync uh, this, and when I click this, it's mm -hmm. going to go to something else that's empty. Boom! It's empty. Got it. Yep. So let me just try. Let me just try without looking. Oh my goodness. Stack panel. Stack layout. Oh. <laughs> Layout, thank you, sir. Uh, what was it? Cell padding or spacing? Spacing. Spacing equals zero. Do uh, you want any spacing in between your items? Oh, maybe I do. I'll just put. I'll just put. You know what I do? Like every time I do this stuff, I'm like, I don't know what I should put. So I put something like ridiculous, like 200. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I like to set background. Yeah, um, it's just in case, yeah. right? Yeah. So stack layout, right? And then I have to, like, I could just. Can I just do an image? Yeah, you can do an image. Wait, well, what, you probably have some code there. I do have some code. We have a question for, I'm going to say, I'm going to say your name wrong. I'm just going to say LG. Okay. All right. He says he's getting some issue in the Android project about initialized component does not exist. Um, I've seen this every once in a while. You just might need to close down Visual Studio, reopen it. Um, okay. You still should be able to deploy just fine. It could just be something weird in the bin and obj, whatever version of Xamarin. We did install the latest version of Xamarin before we did this. So we went into we did. the little pop-up said you have the latest version. That's the best that I can say, LG, um, if you're seeing that initialized component error. You, if you only see that, still hit debug, it'll still deploy. It's just some weird IntelliSense thingy that's... And it, you know, it happened to me, because what I did is I wanted to make sure I could run this, just because I didn't want, I didn't want to be weird and be like, hey, what's going on? And this like awkward silence. Mm -hmm. We could make awkward silence anyway. Oh, yeah, it yeah. would still be, entertaining. still be entertaining. What I'm saying is that I did not want to do that here, and so I ran into some minor issues, but I just updated everything. And yeah. then sometimes I had, to, I had to restart my machine because I had that network error. Oh, yeah. And so there was, I mean, it feels like there's just a little bunch of ticky tack things. We should have like a forum where, or yeah. maybe there is, like where you can see, like these are some of the issues I had because, I mean, they were pretty simple to fix. Yeah. Tell you what they you also go to forum forums.xamarin.com. Oh, there <laughs> there's a button on there. All right, cool. you guys. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we have a scroll view. Yeah. A stack layout, yep. and then we have these things. I, I was going to try to do it myself, <laughs> but I'm like, why? Why, is this why? It's already there. Now, we put it in a scroll view because we have a really, really long description, and you want to be able to scroll that content. Got it. Makes sense, right? Okay. And we put padding and spacing. There's a little bit difference here. Padding is the space inside that everything is offset, and then spacing is the distance between each of those elements. Got it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, yep. absolutely. And if it doesn't, then I can go back and look. Yeah. Now we're going to add some buttons because button, we want to use some cool plugins. Button time. Yeah. Let's button. add some. Because maybe we want to do some text to speech or maybe Here. we want to launch. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Maybe we want to um, launch the website of the oh, user, of course. for instance. That'd be kind of cool. So we have a, a avatar for the image, name, title, description. I set the purple to text color. You can set whatever you want. It's your day. I mean, you can find your favorite hex value and put it there. Um, I don't actually know if fuchsia is a color. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll set, let's keep it at purple. I only know like five colors, let's yeah. be honest with each other. I, somebody told me this word and I remembered it. <laughs> Fuchsia. I think it's a color. Fuchsia. All right. So here's what we're going to do is we have our user interface and you can run it. Let's, let's, make, it sure like. let's make sure yeah, it works. Let's make sure it works here. Let's go for it. Let's make sure it works here. And then run it on Android after this so we can see the side by side okay. comparison. Got it, got it. Yep. Okay, so sync speakers. Here we go. Matt, oh, Boom. hey. So let me go back to the solutions and I can probably go hit here and do debug, start new instance. 
Does that work? That's amazing. I don't know. Maybe. I'm about to find out. There we go. Xamarin Dev Days Live, we're doing it live. It's, and that's what's this important. is live. Oh, there it is. Oh, cool. Wow. Boom. Sync speakers. Oh, look at that. Isn't You're like it? red here. Why are, how do we go back? Oh, I hit the little back button up there. Oh, that's what that's. Oh, and that's what's doing the popping. Yep. Wow. Why is the colors different? Yeah. So essentially, what what Xamarin Forms will do out of the box is use the default implementations oh. of what things are using. So you can manually set those colors if you want to, though. I see. But this yeah. is like since I didn't say it's going to use whatever color is the nicest that we have seen in that in those yeah, uh, sort exactly. of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I can actually go like this to make sure they're side by side here. And there you go. Hey yo. Yep. All right. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I'll hit uh, stop here. Stop. Did it stop the other one? I think so. Yeah. Yes, it did. That's okay. cool. Multi process debug. There, there you go. All right. So we want to do two things. We want to be able to um, speak back some text, maybe read the description of the speaker. Okay. And also open the website. Okay. So uh, in our code behind here, notice that we did button speak and button website. So, so we we're going to cheat. We're going to we're going to just do it. We're just going to do it. We're cheating. Do I do it in the details page? Do it. Dot on click. Or is it click? Click. Click to plus Sorry. equals. Pow. 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 Is it async? That's it. Uh, no, you don't even need to be async. Oh, nice. Okay. And then the other one was the uh, website. Yeah, button website. Button website. Button. Button. No, not button. Button. Okay. Uh, the oh, button. I forgot to do click. Uh, plus equals. Kapow. Kapow. There you go. Awesome. All right. So we've installed some plugins. Okay. Uh, if you were following along in Xamarin Dev Days Live earlier, essentially what plugins will do is it'll allow you to, we've abstracted a bunch of um, platform-specific APIs into a common API. I see. Right, Xamarin Forms has some of these built in, like that device.os, sure. device.idiom. They also have a device.openURI, so you can open a URL. Oh, okay. Um, uh, which is cool. Right. Um, and then also, we have some plugins. So we've installed a NuGet here. So if you go to browse your NuGets on your solution. Let me browse my NuJays. Yeah. Uh, is it, where is it going to be? It'll be in all of them. Yeah. But it's the same ones on all of them? Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Okay, very good. So if you go in and you can see down here, see that there is plugin.text-to-speech. Boom. Boom. Log in here. There, there we are. Pl Plugin.text-to-speech um, is a plugin that allows us to do text-to-speech on iOS, Android, and Windows. Oh. So it'll speak back the text to us. For those in Germany, das ist fantastisch. <laughs> you can even query the available languages on the device, and it will actually parse it back for you. It's really like awesome. I wrote it. Um, it's cool. So here's what we can do. Is he just he just cash like threw it in and like yeah just I I can make computers speak. I mean, I make just, computers speak. Just casually, you know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. No big deal. No, no biggie. Big deal. Here we go. So here's what you can do. Okay. Um, you can go in and now for the button speak, you can say cross text to speech. Cross. Like cross platform text to speech. Oh, so text to speech there. dot. It's a singleton. Current. What do you think I called it? Speak. Speak. It's literally what it does. Speak. And then there's a there's a speaker that you looks like you've privated up it there. So speaker dot I guess it there would be their name or something. Let's do description. Oh so we so we can talk a little bit longer, right? You can pass and the, there's other things in there. If we don't care though, right? We don't care. That's it. One line of code. It's actually in our shared code, right? Because it's Whoa, actually Xamarin Forms. It's yeah. still in our shared code. Hey, there you go. Yeah, so sometimes it's okay to, to blur those lines mm -hmm. of, of there. Now right. let's do the website, though. The website's cool. So when we tap on it, let's do, let's check to see if the, the website starts with HTTP. Okay. Make sure they have something. Speaker.website right? uh, starts with uh, HTTP colon. Yeah, it's probably fine. Probably just do HTTP. Yeah. Okay, then we're going to do it. So yeah. is there like is there some magic static method or something? There is. So remember when we did device.os or device.idiom? Oh device yeah, yeah. Those are essentially where device specific things we can open a URL or URI. Oh, yep. speaker dot website. Mm -hmm. Now that's going to be a string. We do need to pass it a URI. Oh, so it'd be a new URI yeah, then. New URI. New. Yep. URI. Oh, that is actually one pull request I'm going to be sending down that you should be able to pass it a string because it's open source. Wow. Right? Cool. Okay. This is pretty sweet. Done. Right? That's it. Go oh, it. well, I just, I'm done. You just did it. You did it. All right, so you let me, did it. let me go. This let, is, you know, let me run them both. I'm going to debug both of them at the same time. Go for it. So debug, start new instance on the Android. Debug, start new instance on the, U oops. Wait, 
Oh, is it? Did I? Oh, I think I hit the wrong one. So let's see. On the Android, there you go. Debug. Start new instance. And if I was doing the iOS one with the emulation, it would it would still open the other one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Totally. So the original Xbox or the yeah the original Xbox here. So sync speakers, sync speakers. We'll go to James Montemagno. Is my computer going to speak? Should be. Yeah. Do you have volume on? Okay. Let's turn the volume up here. Okay. It's on the way up. Hello. Should work. I might have broke something though. I'm let me make sure I'm... Oh, you're plugged into HDMI. Oh! Oh! Oh, right-click on your speaker. Mm-hmm. There we go. Playback devices. Pow. Pow. Speakers. Hey! Set as default device. Yeah, now we're talking. Pow. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Hello! Oh, it's muted now. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. James is a principal program manager at Xamarin. Hold on, let me let me mic you. Let me let me get you closer to the mic there. James is a principal program manager at Xamarin. Ho hold on, one more time. Who? James is a principal program manager at Xamarin. Thank you. What about Matthew? What? Tell me about him. Matthew is a Xamarin MVP oh, and certified so Xamarin developer from Madison. Where's he from? W oh. I. Does he have he his own company? He founded his company, Code Mill Technologies, oh. and started the Madison Mobile. I could, like, if I'm having a lonely day, I could totally use, like, a device all day. And just push buttons. Oh, hold on. He's still talking. He's talking. and conferences throughout the Midwest. Oh, my goodness. Does he like gardening? Oh, what else does he do? And loves Wisconsin micro brews and cheese. Thank you, computer. That was beautiful. I should have picked a longer one. I mean, should have picked a longer one. Yeah. No, no, That's mind. why I gave you that nice, short, and sweet oh, one. Oh, right, right, right. right. Okay. Now, as cool as we speak from Windows, it'll actually do the Windows specific, you know, voices. Oh, I haven't too, tried right? this yeah. one. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see what the let's Windows one that. sounds like. Hold on. Here we go. Hello. Oh. Oh. It works. I might have too many things going, going at on. once, and Could so be. Uh, yeah. Could uh, be. And anyways, I already did that joke, and it's yeah. not going to work it's a second so good time. Now. I don't think it worked the first time. Yeah. So just FYI, all right, there you go. So we know it works here. Something is probably I messed up here. Yeah, you should be able to click now, go to website too, and then you oh, should be able to actually go to the website. I, hit, I didn't, so go to website. Boom, it launches the browser, and it'll open up oh, uh, Matt's uh, blog as long as you've got internet, and you're good to go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Look at that. He writes, look at the, like, that's his would, own artwork. Why too. would you even need a phone anymore? Just literally yeah. carry the computer around that has yeah. a phone in it. Exactly. That's what I would do. That's what I pull do. it out. That is what I do. That's what we should do. Okay. All right. So that's awesome. So yeah. let me hit stop here. Yep. Boom. All right. So we did the text to speech. We did the open website. Oh, now we're getting into the into the beefy stuff. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you want to do this? We do can, we have time to do this? We can, instead of setting up our own Azure backend, let's just use the one that I set up already. Okay. Okay. So normally, if you're going to portal.azure.com, or even in Mobile Center, you could do this. This is really cool. You can create a new mobile app. It'll show you how to start this up right inside of here. All right. So yeah. portal.azure.com. Mm -hmm. And you already have one of these. I already have saying, one, right? so we can point it at it. But uh -huh. this will show you how to upload a CSV file to actually create it. So I walk through resource groups, I walk through pricing, I walk through all this stuff automatically. Uh -huh. This is going to be super easy um, to do it. Um, I see. You. Just a few lines of code. If you want to walk through it, we got ten minutes. We got some. I don't know. We got some no questions, so we're good. Crushing it so much. Okay. Okay. So I, this is literally just putting a CSV file up, and I'm just getting it from somewhere else, right? Exactly, but we're doing online, offline data sync. But, oh, what does that mean? So that means essentially once you download the data once, the next time it goes and gets it, it'll just return the cache data automatically. It's going to create a local database for you and is automatically. That, is that, and I have to do like a mobile service to make that work? Yeah, you'll go into the yeah, mobile app. App, mobile app. Yep. Is it quick start? It is a quick start, yeah. Quick start. Hey yo, create. Yep. Then you can name it, and you can do anything you want. The bomb diggity. The bomb diggity. And I'm going to create my own new uh, service uh, resource group. Yep. We're going to call it in honor of James Monte Magno. <laughs> group. Mon I'll say Monte Magnus because you're the best. And then I'll create a new one here. Yep. And uh, where do you put it? Just anywhere. Anywhere you want. I like to put it in West uh, US. West US. West US two. Two, not one. No, two. of course. Two is better. Uh, People use that one less. Monty. Obviously. Ma 
Magnus. 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 And I'm just going to go, what should I do here? I should, I should just... Premium P2. Okay. <laughs> no, you uh, want to do view all. This is tricky. Okay. All right. So uh, view, view, all, all. view all. View all. Scroll to the bottom. Free. And that'll work? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for demo purposes. Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And now make sure you do pin to dashboard. That's super important. Okay, so I know we were going to just use yours, but I said, hey, what the heck, let's just do yeah. this. This will only take a few seconds. So to can I out. move this? Where, how can I move? Look at this goodness. But for those that are OCD and saw that this thing was just over there, it was making me, it upset. was making me upset. Yeah. So how do I hit done? Done. done. <laughs> how do I hit done? It's done. <laughs> done. Done. Got it. Let's go implement the code. Okay. Now, while it's spinning up, it's going to take a minute or two. Okay, so code. Let's go. So essentially what we're going to do is go into our, our app. Our, our update, our app, Azure Service.cs in the services there folder. It is, there it is. I've done a bunch of boilerplate code, but now we need to enter our URL up here. I think it. I think we called it the bomb diggity. The, the bomb diggity. Did I did I spell it right? I don't know. We're about to find out later. We can come back later. Okay, okay. Okay. So here's what I'm doing is I I've essentially set up some of the boilerplate uh, Azure code, which mm -hmm. is. I have this I mobile service sync table, which is a, a, a table of speakers. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So I specify where I want the database to live locally. That's a lot of Elvis operators up in her. You like that? I love it. So it says, hey, is the client null? Is the sync context null? Is it initialized? Else false. Okay. Boom. I love it. That's awesome. I love C Sharp. Mm -hmm. so yeah, much. I know. It is such a good job. Nope. Thanks, Mads Torgerson and Anders Halsberg. Love you guys. I, I keep coming by every day. and knocking on your door, and I know you're in the house, I know, and I know you're there, right? Because I see you shut the lights off and run off, yep. and I just, like, just let me in. <laughs> let me in. Let me in. I want to come in. I want to come, come in. in. Just let me in. Yeah. Okay, so we got this thing. Yep. Oh, it looks like we're using SQLite to store yeah. the stuff. Oh. Yep. Oh, this is clever. Mm -hmm. So you define a table, which is going to be your schema, mm -hmm. and then you initialize this online offline data sync, okay. uh, and then you get the table back. And now you can do inserts, CRUD operations on it, anything you want. And then there's, is there like, when does the sync happen? Whenever, whenever you go, whenever it detects it's online, it'll just sync? Well, so right now you would write that code. Right. We're going to write it here manually, okay. um, but usually I write background services to sync whenever I need it. Oh, it's the bomb oh, it's done. diggity. Yeah, bomb diggity. Bomb diggity. Yeah, copy that pipe. Baby. Boom. Yep. The bomb diggity, and we'll put that right up in her. Mm -hmm. So, boom. Yeah. Cool. I, I did not spell it. This is embarrassing. It I just, I, I just, it's supposed to be an E right here. Like but what, work, yeah. what are we going to do it? Um, All right. So here's what you're going to do. Now, you have the option of doing an ASP.NET backend or a non-ASP.NET backend. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to use this easy tables that's in here. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a second. It'll create, I think, a to-do item for you. Mm -hmm. Now we're, we're, we're in essentially non-production mode, and mm -hmm. we're going to use a SQLite backend. So we're not have a full SQL server or anything mm -hmm. like that. We just have this backend. Okay. So hit add from CSV. And then go ahead and browse for a folder, and it's going to be in that hands-on lab folder that we downloaded oh, hey, from the internet. Oh, so desktop here. Uh, start. Not in that one. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, the one I named really good. There we go. Hands on lab and then speaker.csv. Pow. Yep. And everything is a string and just hit upload. There we go. Up, 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 up. Boom. Totally happened. Now you can click on the speaker and you just put all of that data <gasps> with some special data in there that Ooh. I added. So you know it's coming from Azure into there. Oh, that's that Azure version deal thing, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I make this bigger? I don't know if I know. How. Oh, there you go. Boom. I see. So there's the avatar, and then the last thing you put in there that was was different was the Azure version. Where is that? I think it's called version. Oh, there it is. Version. Yeah. Got it. Boom. Got it. Perfect. So we need to write just about five or six lines of code. Let's do and it. And then we'll do Azure Sync. So scroll okay. down a little bit here. And what we want to do here is get speaker. Um, and so right now we're just returning a blank list. Uh -huh. So we can create a few methods here. And mm -hmm. we're going to first initialize, so make sure it's, a, it's created. Mm -hmm. We're going to call sync speakers, which we're going to implement next. Okay. And then we're going to use a little... Um, and yeah. this initialize method is the one, let's see, F12. Okay, that's yep. the one we did before. Just okay. to make sure that it has the table and everything set up. Okay. And it'll only do it once. That's okay. how we put all this in. Initialize, notes. then await. And then sync speakers, which we're going to do. Yep. Uh, and then finally, we're going to return await a table. So that's our actual SQL local table that we'll have Order the data by. in. 
Now you can do, look at this, we're essentially creating link queries to oh, order by whatever you want. Snap. And then we can innumerable. say to enable async. Kapow, boom. boom. How sweet is that? That's fantastic. And now we just gotta, we just gotta pull them, right? Yep, two lines of code. We wanna go in and sync and push any changes we have locally. Client.syncContacts.push async. If you were watching earlier, Adrian went through how to build this all up. It's okay. pretty much amazing, uh, which is cool. Okay, and then await uh, table dot pull. Oh, so this is like if there's any changes, push them. Yep. If there if there's stuff that needs to be gotten, just get them now. Okay, exactly. So all now we're gonna pass it some query IDs and a query. Essentially, you could use this on your back end to do specific things. Uh -huh. um, right now we're just doing the default, and it doesn't really matter what you name it. So let's see, I'm just typing code and not yep. understanding. So the client sync context is having to do with the data. That I don't understand what the sync context is. Maybe I just say that. So the sync context is something built into Azure Mobile Apps SDK. Oh, it's a mobile that, services it's thing. It's a mobile service thing that essentially figures out data resolution when you're pushing and pulling data. Okay. And you can specify a resolution handler. So by default, it'll be like last one in essentially. Got it. Does it, but you can override it. So it says, hey, any of my tables, any of my data, let me push any changes up, and it manages that for you. And the table is just a mobile services. Sync uh, okay, it's, so it's, it's a got SQL it. table. So it's a, it's a mobile services thing that we're yep. doing. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so think of it as like a, a normal SQL table, but with a little bit more. Got it. And now we probably have to use this instead of what we were doing before, right? Exactly. And where does that go? Into our view model. Okay, so that would be the view model, the speak, of course. And that would be the get speakers, right? Yeah, so now we can delete. Um, all of our HTTP client, all of our JSON stuff, everything, all that hard work that we did. Yes. Delete that. We can delete our using. Of course. We don't need that, don't anymore. Need that anymore. Delete that. Okay. Boom. Now, what we can do is we need two lines of code. So instead of spinning up a brand new um, uh, Azure service, we're going to use our de built-in dependency service built right into Xamarin Forms to actually pull our Azure service. Dot get. So what is a dependency service? Yeah, so and you're just gonna, um, it's gonna be the of type Azure service. Oh, I so see. Th a dependency service allows you to essentially often get down into the native code. So you'll implement an, uh, an interface called, I need to write file to disk. That'd uh -huh. be a very long name. <laughs> but, or any class, it allows you to essentially register that uh, with the system. So it, it, it allows you to create this service anywhere, mock out that service. Um, um, and then it returns it automatically. So I don't have to say new Azure service. It just automatically will spin one up. It's a, it's it's, a dependency service. Oh, it's like it's a DI a, thing. It's, a D, it's dependency injection, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, so Azure service, if, like, mm -hmm. if it's already running, I mean, how do you, do you have to define like the scope of how long this thing lives, or what do you do? Yeah, so if, if you go into the Azure service, and you go up to the very top, boom. We have a uh, assembly export that will actually register the dependency service of the class. Oh, I see. If it implements any interfaces, you could actually then say get for this interface and it would return it. Now you can do it at an assembly level or you can manually do it and then do the scoping. So I by see. default, it's a single scope, so it'll only ever create one version of the Azure service. And that's ever. What's important, ever. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's it. All right. So you're so calling into it, you're gonna call get items, and that's all the code you just wrote just a few lines of code to actually do the synchronization. Cross our fingers, and I think we are about done. The, the original artisanal X, original mm -hmm. Xbox here, sync speakers. It's going to go off, and this is going to be the first time it goes off to Azure and does a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. and ideally, crossing fingers. Now, we did put it on the free tier. There oh. we are. Hey, oh. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's go over here, and let's, put it, let's do the droid one here. And uh, let me go debug and start new instance. Hey, yo. Yep. Boom. Now I'm hearing the, the sound coming out. Yeah. Click, yeah. That's cool. Hey, yo. Oh, and everything's just working, right? And then yep. I'm not going to hit speak. Yep. Because but I notice that we also have some other monkeys in there as speakers. Little Henry, you see him? Oh, so hey. There's, there's little Henry. Oh, you put some extra things in the CSV hey, file to see? show that it was different. Different, yes. Yeah. So clever. Well, that's so awesome, clever. dude. I think we did it. Boom. Literally in 90 minutes, taking that. You can also run the finish folder, run the same thing. It'll be up, and boom. But it was mostly bad jokes. Mostly bad yeah, jokes. Yeah, if you, if you cut out jokes. all the bad jokes, <laughs> 
like this was probably like 20 minutes worth. <laughs> So what did you think? How was your experience? You know, it was good. I, like, yeah. uh, uh, this, this thing that I liked the most is I'm familiar with, I was familiar with WPF. Yep. I was familiar with MEVM and that kind of thing. And so I feel like, like I could totally just move to this really quickly. Yeah, yeah. And they're giving us the stink eye right now. Look, she, she's pointing at the thing. I can see it's blinking red. I see, oh, there's lots of questions. questions. All right, let's go. So can I distribute the app to the App Store through Mobile Center? Um, so the question is around the mobile center that we showed earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, that's more for distributions for beta testers. Like if you took this app, put it in mobile center, you would get an email. You can, of course, sign it. You can download that. And then there's other APIs that you can do. I think their future is to do that. But you could take this beautiful application we just wrote. You could put it on, on the Windows Store. I'm sure they let you. You could put it on Android. I don't know about Apple. They have a little bit more <laughs> stringent policies. I don't know if the monkey sure. application is enough for them. Um, look at this. I don't know, people, I don't know why, why. We, we Tom, get, Tom, Tom loves us. Tom, we're coming over this weekend. Yeah, come, when you come to Seattle or Redmond, we'll drink some coffee. Yeah, we'll just have It'll a good be time. We'll talk about um, dev jokes. Yeah, I hope, I mean, I, I hope people really enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed Dev Days Live. Mm -hmm. um, so people said, when will the design tab for editing XAML forms in Visual Studio exist? Let's see if we can jump back to your machine. Okay. Now you have the stable and in, in our alpha channels we have better preview. So let's go into open, uh, go to view. V view. And then go to other windows. Other windows. And then Xamarin forms previewer. Pow! All right, now go ahead and put that somewhere. Like, you know, pin it somewhere. Okay, okay, so I'll just pin it right here on the side. Now let's open up our um, up, 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 um, our uh, our speakers page. That okay, was speakers, speakers page. That's mm -hmm. Okay. And then tap on it. This. Yep. If it works, maybe not. Should load it. Maybe I'm, like I, yeah. I remember I never got IntelliSense yeah. for this, so it might be something I missed. <laughs> it should be. Up. It could be something strange. So you're probably yeah. doing this at home, Tom, yep. and you're like, yeah, it's working for me. <laughs> Yeah, and it should it should show up inside of here the previewer the previewer is in preview, all right. So it should be there. The, it's the a preview there. preview. It's a preview of the previewer. That's yeah, a preview preview. Um, and then in our beta and alpha channels, um, there are even more improved versions of cool. it. So that may be some intricacies there. Awesome of it. Um, let's see what other people asked. Uh, can the real time design view work without connecting to a Mac? If you want to do any design work, if you need to use the Xamarin.Forms preview for iOS, when you deploy to iOS, you need an iOS, you need a Mac. Yeah, there's no way to not do that. You can't, it's just an Apple thing. I, mm -hmm. I wish we could. It's an Apple, it's a EULA thing, actually. It's, yeah. not, a, it's not an actual limitation. Uh, just the SDKs, the simulators, they all exist on a Mac, so you gotta have a Mac. It doesn't have to be a very fancy rose gold MacBook. But it, if you're gonna be cool, I think it should be. Big fan of the Mac Not Rose on. Gold. I only buy Rose Gold devices. Got it. Um, but honestly, like this is a, a a mobile processor, eight gigs of RAM. You could buy a Mac Mini. You could use one of those. How services. much? How much was this? This one was like about like twelve hundred or something. Oh. But a Mac Mini is about five hundred. Oh. Especially used ones, you can get one. Just make sure that it can run the latest versions of Mac OS, like Sierra. That's really important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And all I did was install Xamarin and Xcode, which is um, essentially the SDKs. That's it on this Mac, and that's all I do. I do almost 90% of my development right here on my Surface Book. Got it. Yep. Okay, cool. cool. That's it. I all think right, any other questions? I think that's it. That's it. Crushed it. All right, awesome. dude. I'll let you take it out. Well, thank you so much. And thanks, Seth. Thank you so much for doing this. Actual live building applications. If you guys have any questions at all, tweet at me. Get in contact. E email me. MOTZ at Microsoft.com. That is me. Hope you guys loved Xamarin Dev Days. Use hashtag Xamarin Dev Days. Tell all your friends, family, any developer you know all about it. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno. This is my man, Seth, in the beautiful, amazing shirt. Yeah, this I'm wearing a, a James Montemagno-inspired shirt. So, I love it. Uh, thanks so much. And thank all of you for hanging in there for the last four hours and building awesome apps together. Hope you love Xamarin. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno. And I'm Seth Juarez. Oh, he just threw something at us. What are you doing? I love it.